from across the US. Um, and I'm happy to go over egg freezing 101. Don't worry for those of you, if you weren't at the previous event, you don't necessarily need a ton of information. I'm gonna try and touch on as many things as possible so that you can get as much info from tonight's session as you need. A little bit though, just kind of background, you know, who are we? We are Pine Body and we are on a mission to really make reproductive health, fertility care, accessible, affordable, just easy because it's such a thing in and of itself. We don't need to add to the extra stress or anything else about it. So we really help to try and do um, uh, your direct to you to do things like this. We try and go through your employers. We try and do whatever we can to really help you guys be able to have control of your reproductive health and your family building goals and dreams and desires. So we do a lot, um, and this is a very busy slide that really breaks it all down. Um, we do, for fertility support, we do consultations for men, for women, for transgender. We really do it all. Um, we have virtual and inpatient visits, some locations. We do egg freezing, we do sperm freezing, we do embryo freezing, we do IUI, IVF, we do ICSI, we do testing, we do all sorts of things, depending on your needs. Um, we do genetic testing for embryos, we do genetic carrier screening, we also have at-home fertility testing. In addition to all of the actual testing and things that we do, we also offer counseling and support. And so we have very specialized areas where we offer that um, and we can really help you in a lot of different areas like LGBTQ, if you're looking for third party with donors or surrogates, um, we have overall wellness, nutrition, um, mental health, you know, so many things because it really all comes together when it comes to fertility. It's not just one thing in its silo. But aside from all of those things, you're here talking about egg freezing. So let's talk about that. And essentially, egg freezing, the most important thing, really, if you can take anything home from this, is that when it comes to fertility, age is the most important factor. And that's because as we get older, we start having less eggs overall and less quality of eggs. So we're born with all the eggs we're ever going to have. It's about maybe 2 million or so. And then you start losing them right away. You actually have the most that you're ever going to have when you're in your mom's belly when she's pregnant with you still. And you start losing them even before you're born. And by the time you get your first period, you're down to maybe 300, 400,000. From there, you keep losing eggs no matter what. So if you're on birth control, if you're getting periods, if you're not getting periods, you're just always losing them. And that's just nature, unfortunately. And so because you're losing your eggs, you have less eggs overall, that contributes to it being harder to get pregnant. Um, you have less eggs and then also less quality, which I'll talk about that in a second. But this is kind of a cool graph that breaks down the number of eggs that you have and your chance of pregnancy. And so you can see you're most fertile when you're young, you have the highest number of eggs. And then as your egg number diminishes, your chance of pregnancy also goes down. And so you hear the number 35 talked about a lot. And so that's the age at which we kind of delineate more advanced age versus less advanced age, I guess, if you will. Um, and that's because we start to see a more significant decline in the quality of the eggs after 35. And so we talk about that as being kind of what's called advanced maternal age, as if you're 35 and over. Um, because of that, we're a little bit more aggressive about things because we know that the numbers are probably lower, the quality is probably lower. We don't want as much time to go by um, if you're trying to get pregnant. And so that's kind of the point at which we start kind of really being more aggressive, talking more about things, shortening the time frame if you're trying to get pregnant. But also for purposes of planning ahead, when we start to see a decline more in the quality of the eggs. But it's not a light switch. It's not like you turn 35 and then all of a sudden your eggs start going down. Um, it, it's something that does happen. And actually one in 10 women have lower ovarian reserve numbers. And so that's kind of like the, the number of eggs before you're 35. But you never know unless you check. So that's why we recommend coming in and doing this assessment. Even if you're not sure you want to freeze your eggs, it's something good. You can get information. You can learn about yourself. Um, and oftentimes, I've never had anybody be like, oh, I really regret freezing my eggs. Everyone is so happy they did it when they did or they wish they did it sooner. They're happy at least that they got the information if they did testing. So I think it's really good, really important and powerful to to know where you stand, to know, you know, about this 35 point and how fertility does go down with age because the quality and the quantity of eggs goes down. Um, but we can do something about it. And that's why we do egg freezing. 
Um, and so to, to touch a little bit on the quality, you know, I say quantity and that's numbers, pretty, pretty straightforward. The quality, however, that is like the genetic health of the egg. And so as women get older, the chromosomes don't separate as nicely. And so you can get some sticky chromosomes, you can get more genetic abnormalities. And so that can lead to increased chances of miscarriage or passing on genetic abnormalities, such as Down syndrome, et cetera. And so that's the kind of stuff that we can't check for necessarily when we're doing our testing. So I do recommend it. I think it's important, but I can't necessarily tell you about your egg quality when we're doing the testing. I can only tell you about the quantity and then we extrapolate quality based on age. So again, that's why age is important. So to that point, this is all fine and good, but what can we do about it? And the answer is you can be proactive. You can come in, you can do testing, we can learn about it, and then we can preserve your fertility where it currently is for use in the future. If you are focusing on your career or you're traveling or you just haven't found the right person or whatever may be the case, we can take your eggs where they currently are and preserve them now for your use when you are ready. I can't necessarily say you're gonna have no trouble getting pregnant or you're super fertile or anything like that. All I can do is take where you're at now and save it for the future. But that can really be a helpful thing if we're talking about the quality and the quantity going down with time. So kind of just going into some of the most basics of reproduction, your highest chance of, of getting pregnant or when you're the most fertile, if you will, is in the in a perfect like 28 day cycle, for example, day one of your period is the first day of full flow bleeding. That's day one. And your most fertile days are day 10 to 14 approximately. So in a few days leading up to ovulation, the day of ovulation, that's what's called the fertile window. And so if you think about it, really only five days out of the month, are you fertile? But those are the five days where we're kind of planning and we know that there should be an egg and whatnot growing. Um, and so just kind of the, the physiology of it all is that the hormones start building up and your body is going to try and grow one egg in a given month to ovulate. When we do something like egg freezing, instead of just one growing, we want to try and grow as many as we can from that group. And so we want to initially start the process of doing an assessment and an evaluation to see where you stand. And we have to time it based on your cycle. And so what we do typically to assess your ovarian reserve or kind of like a resting follicle count is we look at um, an ultrasound. And so if you have a uterus, we look at your uterus, we look at your ovaries, we can count the little follicles in your ovaries. And just as a kind of aside, I may use the term follicle and eggs interchangeably. And that's because a follicle is what we can see on ultrasound. It's a little black circle that we see and that houses a microscopic egg. Eggs are tiny, so we can't see them and we can use the follicle to approximate that. And so that's where that kind of terminology comes from. So essentially with this internal or vaginal ultrasound, we can look at your ovaries, we can count up the number of follicles, potentially eggs, and see how many your body has that month. That number can fluctuate a little bit because there can be some variation cycle to cycle, but typically it's within kind of a ballpark. And so it gives us a sense of where your body is at. Some people <coughs> excuse me, ask, well, what happens to all the eggs? Like, they just going to stay for next month or what? And, and each month you get a new wave. So that's why it is something that can change. And each month it can be a little bit different. Um, and then in addition to doing the ultrasound, we also want to do some blood work. And so that's typically checking the fertility hormones. AMH is a very common one. It stands for anti-malarian hormone. And it can actually be checked at any point in your menstrual cycle. And it can give us a sense of your resting count and how many eggs you're likely to have, how you're likely to respond to our medication, that type of thing. <clears throat> so when you do the testing, when you get the results, again, this tells us about the quantity of your eggs. And so at Kind Body, we're really forward thinking, and I'll talk about this in a second too. We have a portal. We have these really amazing um, fertility calculators where you can actually plug in your AMH level and your antral follicle count. And your antral follicle count is the, the follicle count that I was talking about. It's just the small resting follicles. Um, and we can give you a prediction potentially of how many eggs you might get. Um, again, it just tells us about the numbers. It doesn't tell us about the quality. That's again, based on your age, but it can be really telling and predictive of, of maybe 
you know, maybe you should be a little bit more aggressive and start thinking about doing this, or maybe, you know, you have a good number of eggs, but the fact that your age is going by with time, you can't reverse that, unfortunately. Um, and so we know that just the quality is going to continue to decline. Um, in addition to age, there are other things that are important. So paying attention to your diet, your lifestyle, you know, you want to make sure that you're eating well, you're getting good nutrition, you're getting good sleep. Your family history is also important. The biggest predictor of a woman going into menopause is the age at which her mom went into menopause. And so if, for example, your mom had early menopause, that's something to know that may be indicative to you that your follicle count might be lower because menopause is when you don't have follicles anymore. So if you know that about your family or, you know, maybe somebody in your family had some sort of other concerning thing and you want to get evaluated, definitely it's a good idea. Um, and we'll certainly talk about that at your visit. And of course, mental health is super important too. Like I was talking about earlier, you know, mental health, emotional health, physical health, it all comes together. It's all really important. And so you want to make sure that you're addressing all of these things, you're thinking about all of these things, and you're looking kind of down the road. Um, the one thing that does not impact fertility, and this comes up a lot too, is birth control. So birth control does not cause you to be infertile, even if you're on birth control for a long time. Unfortunately, it's not preserving and keeping eggs. So that's kind of a downside, but it's also not necessarily making you infertile either. It's probably just the passage of time, potentially birth control pills can also make it seem like you're getting a menstrual cycle, but maybe you don't really have regular menstrual cycles. So it doesn't cause things to happen, but it sometimes can hide things that are maybe abnormal that we wouldn't know if you weren't on the birth control. So obviously these are things and nuances that we can talk about in a more detailed fashion at a visit. Um, but just some things and food for thought. So getting into kind of the meat of the actual process, what is egg freezing? Egg freezing is when we go in, we try and grow as many eggs or follicles as we can from that group that is predetermined in a given month for you. We remove them from your body and then we freeze them until you're ready to use them down the road. Things for you to think about. You want to kind of think about how old are you? How many kids do you want ideally? How old will you be when you have your first kid? How old will you be when you have your last kid? Because again, it all comes back to your age and kind of what your desires are. If you are 35 and you want five kids, then obviously you're going to need more eggs than someone who's 32 and wants one kid. Um, and if you're planning, you know, for the future, maybe you don't need your eggs for baby number one, maybe it's for baby number two down the road. Um, so these are all things that you want to kind of start thinking about and considering before you start the process. So you can have a mental image of, okay, if I'm expecting maybe X number of eggs, I want, and I have a goal of X, Y, Z number of eggs. So then you can kind of just be prepared. Um, so how does it work? Like I was saying, each month, your body has a set of eggs that is kind of prepared and ready to go for that month. When your body is doing its own thing, it picks one. When we're doing egg freezing, we try and grow as many as we can from that cycle. And so the way that we do that is you do daily hormone injections to try and grow as many eggs as you can. So we base your medication dosage and your plan and how we're gonna approach it based on the initial blood work and testing and ultrasound. And then once everything looks good, you've done all the preliminary tests and everything, you start daily shots. And the shots last for about 10 or 12 days. And you're coming in for blood work and ultrasound during that time so that we can assess how your body is growing and maturing. Once your eggs reach the right stage where we think there's gonna be a good egg inside, you do the very last shot called the trigger shot. And then that's when we set the time for your egg retrieval, which is where we go in and we take the eggs out of your body. They then go into the IVF lab where they get frozen. And then they stay frozen until you're ready to use them. Um, as I was saying, you know, at kind body, we're really forward thinking. We're really about making it easier for you. So we have a great app that you can use. Um, we're, we're trying to kind of, you know, that's kind of the phone on, on this, just to kind of throw a little plug in there. But, um, during the actual egg freezing process, we do a lot of communication from that. Um, and so during the, the process, you're going to want to make sure that you're in good communication. You are coming in very often for blood work and ultrasound so that we can check. And typically you come in in the morning, we'll do your blood work, we'll do your ultrasound, and then we'll get your results same day and tell you if there's going to be a change to your plan by the evening. 
Um, the medications that you are taking, they are the same hormones as what your body is making naturally, but we're just giving you a higher dose so that we can grow more eggs rather than just the one. Um, the hormones work in the same way, like I said. So you are going to do the same kind of thing. You, you give yourself the shots. It's just an augmented version of what your body would do naturally. But we're also going to add on a medication to prevent you from ovulating. We don't want your body to just release all these eggs. We're working really hard to grow. So you do the hormones. They're similar to what your body naturally makes. You do the shots for about 10 days, plus or minus. We're trying to get as many as you can. We're watching you closely. Um, and during that time, you'll get updates on your phone and you'll get, you know, updates on how many eggs are growing and what your response is like. And, um, we'll teach you how to use the medications and mix them and you'll have a ton of guidance. And so ultimately the goal is to try and grow as many eggs as we can safely to then remove them from your body at the egg retrieval. And we're here to help and support you every step of the way. As far as kind of a timeline, big picture, I know a lot of this is kind of repetitive, but I also know it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, but it, again, it's about a 10 day process on average, plus or minus. Some people are a little more, some people are a little bit less. But roughly speaking, you, you come in, we assess, things look good. You start the, the hormones and the shots and it's about maybe two weeks until you have your egg retrieval. And you'll get a timeline calendar, kind of a, a tentative look of how it could all be but it's pretty quick. It only takes about two weeks. And the lead up time, the testing, all of the pre-cycle stuff can take a little bit longer. But once you actually start the process, it's, it's fairly quick. Um, you may feel a little bit bloated. You may have a little bit of you know enlarged ovaries because that's partially the goal. So you may feel that following the retrieval, you may want to plan to take it easy. I wouldn't necessarily go hop on a plane and go on vacation right after. Um, but just so you know, the, pro the whole process itself is fairly short. The actual egg retrieval. So you go through all the shots, you do all the everything, and then you do your trigger shot. Two days later, you have your egg retrieval. And so the way that this works is it is a small surgical procedure. You're put under a light anesthesia, and it's a fairly quick procedure. The way that all of this works is you're doing transvaginal ultrasound, because that's the best way to see the ovaries. And so during all this follow-up, you're having frequent ultrasounds. And then when it comes time for the retrieval, we do the same thing. It's a vaginal ultrasound, but there's a little needle at the end and we poke into your ovary and we take the egg and the fluid out. It goes into the IVF lab and then the embryologist will identify the eggs. So the embryologist will tell us how many eggs we have. And then we freeze the eggs that are what are called mature eggs. And so those are eggs that ultimately we can use for fertilization down the road. Once you have an egg that's been frozen, it's changed a little bit versus an egg that hasn't been frozen. And so when it comes time to fertilize that, or when you want to use that, obviously we set up a time, we talk about it, check the sperm, but then you can use a procedure called ICSI or intracytoplasmic sperm injection. And we use that to fertilize the egg for future use when it comes to that point. Obviously this is down the road. We're not focusing on that, but just so you know, that's roughly how it goes. But really, at this point, once you've gone through the, the shots, the approximately two weeks, you get all these eggs out, they're frozen, you can um, fertilize them whenever you're ready. Ideally, you get pregnant on your own when you're ready, you don't necessarily need these eggs. But if you do, you can let us know, we'll fertilize them, you can use them, you can do an embryo transfer when you're ready, um, and we can help get you pregnant. And again, it could be maybe not for baby number one, maybe it's for baby number two or three or whatever down the road, or maybe it is for baby number one. And at least you'll know, I had these eggs. I'm happy I got them when I got them. And you don't have to worry about how long can they be stored because they can be stored a long, long time, probably longer than you would want to use them. Um, what else? So as far as next steps, if you are, you know, thinking I want to get pregnant, maybe in a couple months, or maybe it's a couple years, or maybe it's longer than that. Like I was saying, you never know where you stand unless you look, unless you do some testing. Knowledge is power. And I totally recommend taking the time, talk to me or one of the other providers at one of our other amazing clinics, you know, get some information about who you are, where you're at, if there's things that you should be concerned about. Each person is different. So this is kind of just a general overview. Um, some things, you know, need to be fine-tuned based on your individual health history or family history or whatever, but really just kind of getting in, getting tested, seeing where you're at, 
and starting to consider the process is, is huge. The next steps would be to book that one on one visit. Um, we do virtual visits, which is awesome. I think it's really great. You can do it from the comfort of your own home. Um, and then typically you will have to come in to do some, you know, blood work and ultrasound and that type of thing. But at the visit, we can go over your history, your goals, we can talk about next steps and then, you know, get a lot accomplished. And then you can come in whenever it works for you. Again, sometimes we have to time it with your period. So it works out better that way anyway.